Hi, my name is Ashley Baker. I'm a parent consultant at the Utah Parent Center, and I'm really excited to, you know, speak with you today and to go over this presentation that can we that we can highlight a few activities that can be used and accessed by all different age groups, including yourself as a parent, and all ability levels for your children. So the intention of this presentation today is to you know, have a break in our lives and to find some fun time together as families and, and to find something that we can do all together. I want to let you know that some of these activities may seem like it's more above your child's skill level, but I would love for you to sit back and be able to think outside the box with me and to think how we can engage all of our kids at all different types of levels. So whether that be we you know, use hand over hand and help, you know, our child draw something together or, you know, we want to really broaden some of the interest base and, and not limit anything that any of our kids can do. So today we're going to possibly find some new interests together and possibly travel to some exotic places, some museums right from your living room. So this is going to be exciting. We're going to navigate it together. So bear with me as I'm going to go to different resources and some different sites to kind of segment some of these things and highlight some fun stuff. So the first section I want to talk about is mindfulness. It's a great technique, especially when our kids are feeling stressed or overwhelmed. It really talks about having some methods to be able to calm ourselves and to regulate through, you know, some stressful times. We're going through a lot right now. And, and it's, you know, not only good for our kids, but this is also good for adults as well. And I love using mindfulness in my own home with my family. So we're going to go first. It's called Mindful Schools and they have some great live sessions that are free. That's the most exciting part. And you can navigate them. We're gonna kind of look through segment nine is episode nine, and it features author Chris Willard. He wrote a book and he's gonna talk a little bit about breathing and mindfulness in our breath. So let's start together and have this journey and let's take a look at our first segment. Okay. Take it away so much and i'm here with my son leo and we are sharing a book that i wrote with my friend daniel retchoffen who i believe is also a mindful schools friend and it was illustrated by our friend holly clifton brown and she lives all the way over in wales and this is really about mindful breathing and it's really kind of just about fun breathing and i heard someone say once that your breath can be kind of like a remote control it just kind of turns the volume down when you're having some really big frustrating feelings like anger or sadness it doesn't make those feelings go away but it helps them not be quite so big and so when we slow our breath down a little bit we can really start to turn the volume down on those big emotions so this is an alphabet book as i'm sure you guessed because the title is alpha breaths and so the letter a stands for what leo Alligator. Alligator breath. So we can start with an alligator breath. So you can hold your arms out like this. And then we can breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in. And breathe out. And I was at a workshop, giving a workshop, and this woman in the audience said that her daughter feels kind of silly doing a big alligator breath in her second grade, which I kind of understand. And she said that what her daughter does under the desk is just a baby alligator breath. Or a teeny baby alligator breath. And I just really thought that was nice. I thought that was So that was our first little segment. I hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna be sharing all these links down below for you so that you can access them and, and kind of go through them at your own leisure. So let's go to our next segment here. 
Okay, so this next segment is a lot of fun. So if your kids like to draw or they want to learn to draw, this cute gal, her name's, it's called Draw with Megan. She also has a Facebook page that you can go into and access some of her things. But I hear a lot of, in my house, I'm bored. I have nothing to do other than, can we play video games? <laughs> so that's what, that's what I hear a lot of here. So maybe you're in the same boat too. Anyway, I really love her art exercises because she talks through them and she also engages. You can connect with her, ask her, your kids can request certain different types of things to draw, which let's, it's all about getting creative, right? So let's go to this next segment here and go from there. Hello everyone, welcome back to Drawing with Megan. Thank you for being here today. All the materials you're gonna need to draw with me today is a piece of paper. I'm using my notepad and something to draw with. I'm using a marker, but it could be a pencil, a pen, anything you have on you. So I'm gonna draw out of this bucket some of our suggestions. Let's see, close my eyes, shuffle them up. All right, what do we got? So today, we are going to learn to draw Campbell. Campbell has requested that we draw a kitten. So let's learn how to draw a kitten. To learn how to draw a kitten, well, I'm going to start with, so kind of how I've been drawing all of my animals that I've been teaching you guys how to draw. A very simple way to draw the head is to start with a big U. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Start with a big U like this. And then kittens, they have pointed triang triangle ears. So we are going to use the top of this line, bring it down to make a little triangle. Same thing on this side, bring it down to make a triangle. And then we're just gonna connect them across the middle. So there we go, we have the head and two triangles. So another triangle would be the nose. So I'm gonna do a little triangle right in the middle of the face, uh, a little down from center is a triangle for the nose. And then for the mouth, what I'm gonna do is across the bottom, I'm gonna give her a smiling mouth and then connect it to the nose, just like that. Then we can give two eyes right there. So now we have a head for the kitten. So now we're gonna give her some legs and a body. So first we're gonna do the uh, front legs, which is gonna be where I bring a line down, just like that, kind of like a really tall lopsided U. <laughs> Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and connect it at the bottom. So now I have two front legs. Then for the back legs, I'm gonna draw a hump like this, and then a little hump out like that. So we have a back leg. That's kind of where the knee comes up and that's the little foot. So she's crouching. Here we go, another one. Then it needs a tail. So we're gonna do a wiggle like that a wiggly line just like that and we're going to do the same line parallel which means right next to it so a little beside just like this and then connect at the top great that was a really fun instruction piece on how to draw a kitten so let's think outside the box here for a second First, I would love for you to show that segment to all your kids. And when we need to maybe look at different, you know, modifications to be able to adapt that to each one of our kids, it may be parent, you draw it and your kids color it. Or parent, you have your hand over your child's hand and you help them draw it. Or you have, a higher ability level student who's able to just go and watch the video and be able to draw it and it's going to be really fun to see how everybody's art piece comes out it may look a little abstract but that's okay it's just the whole point of trying something new and you know having fun while we do it so our next piece here i want to talk about all the fun summer vacations that maybe that you had planned as a family that got canceled or changed or you know maybe you have some kids in your family that aren't they, they can't access a lot of these places they can't 
you know, take their wheelchair on, say, one of the hikes in Grand Canyon or something like that. But that, do, that shouldn't stop us to be able to expose our kids to see what these things are like. So we had planned as a family to go to Grand Canyon and it got canceled. So we got a little creative and we found a wonderful site that basically has Google Earth and we can look down on this. So I'd like to share my screen so that we can take a look at this together. Okay. So it's, here it is right here. It's visiting the Grand Canyon and it's really kind of neat because you can go right into Google Earth if you would like. Look at this one, go rafting virtually down the Colorado River. Can't go rafting, but you wanna know what it looks like in the middle of that you know, river and, and maybe the sites that you might see. Some really neat things here. So I'm gonna click on this link for Google Earth and kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. So I am actually navigating this with my mouse and I'm not good at this at all. You may have someone in your family that's better at clicking on these things and, and scrolling in and out. You might, you're gonna have to bear with me as I access this. But this is an actual Google Earth shot right here that we are accessing to view the Grand Canyon. So we can click different sections to go, scroll and see, view around. I'm sure there are lots of other fun tools that can be accessed through Google Earth as well. Don't just limit to maybe you know, we, we pick Grand Canyon. Let me click out here so I can talk to you a little bit about this. So we pick Grand Canyon, but what if your family had planned to go to Disneyland and you can't go? Get onto Google Earth. Let's see what's going on at Disneyland. The streets are bare there, I'm sure, as everything is closed. However, why don't you just think of these, you know, outside of the box ideas and ask your family, what would you like to see? Are there any places that you learned at school that you would like to venture that we can find some information about? All right, I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna to go to our next piece. Um, okay, this one's a little different. Um, I, I know my, my children here will always say, um, if it's educational learning, they're pretty much tuned out. But if I can engage them and say, hey, we're, we're going to visit a museum, and it's a museum that's in France, and we can't fly there, or we can't go there, but we definitely can still learn and see what it's about. And I know hands-on that if I have my kids go in and actually use the mouse and scroll around, they're gonna be more apt to be engaged and find things that are exciting and motivating to them. So let's share my screen and let's look at this. Okay, here's the loop in France. And this is the ground floor. And as you can see here, these are the royal tombs that we're looking at and you can, take the mouse, you can click on specifics, and it tells us what this um, sarcophagus box is, and when it was in 1184 to 1153 BC. I mean, it, it's fascinating if you have kids that are into this. And then the ones, don't laugh. Here we go. See, look, it, it, it takes someone who really knows how to <laughs> move things around, but you, you can click and move to different sections. You can go upstairs to view what's up there. It's pretty neat. For me, it, it takes a lot of skill moving around. But maybe you have some kids or yourself that won't have some difficulties in that. All right, another fun site. Let's talk to the animal lovers out there. I know that we all can talk about maybe, I don't know, lizards underwater. Um, 
their puppies for sure, but I'm sure we can ask our families, let's come up with, you know, an animal, each of us that we want to find out and, and see what they're all about and do some research on. And I found this really fun website here. I'm going to share this. This right here is actually, it's called Explore Live Cams. I think it's phenomenal. It's great. So this one is actually sharks. That is not a great white shark, but this is not live. This is recorded. So they have lots of these fun features that you can look into that will show some of this access. I'm going to mute that so hopefully you can hear me. Just a minute, here comes the great white. Slowly but surely, it is approaching. Anyway, it's, it's, it can go for as long as you want and it's actually using some meditation music in the background not sure how I could meditate watching sharks, but maybe some of you can. So there's this, and then we can actually explore some live cams as well. As you can see, these are, um, it says a wolf close up, but that looks like an owl to me. Oh yes, great horned owls at Roger's place. But if, if you can see up on the top here of where I'm highlighting, you've got lots of different live streams that you can look at from kittens to information to Africa, underwater. Look at all these great sites that you can click into. And, and of course, you know, if you view say Africa, their time frame is different than here. And so look at this. This one is in at nighttime. It looks like it's a water hole at night, so you can still see as animals approach the water hole at night. It's kind of a really fun site, I thought, to, to venture into. Okay, get out of there. This next one is a lot of fun. We're going to explore the, it's the British Library in London. We're going to go to their website here and it shows some really great fun things in terms of arts and culture. There was this really fun one on Harry Potter that I want to show a clip on this so that we can watch some fun interactive. Hey brother! Guys, we never got our Hogwarts letter, but we may have just received the next best thing. We have been invited by Google Arts and Culture and the British Library in London. The library has curated an incredible exhibit called Harry Potter, A History of Magic. Now, not only did we get to visit the exhibition, but we also had the chance to meet one of the masterminds behind the project, Julian Harrison. He'll be giving us some lessons in Muggle Magic, where we'll discover some of the connections between Harry Potter and the history of magic. Guys, I'm really pleased to see you both here today, and I'm gonna love talking magic with you. Yeah, well, we always love talking magic. Lesson one, how to survive a basilisk bite. In the Harry Potter books, the largest snake is actually the basilisk. Do snakes in real life commonly, are they associated with darkness in the same way that they are in the books? Well, in real life, snakes represent the duality between good and evil, between darkness and light. Okay. You know, of course, that snakes have one incredible quality. They can actually shed their skins. Right. So they effectively are reborn every now and then. Right. Now, basilisks actually have a long historical tradition and you know, of course, that a basilisk can kill you with a stare. It can also kill you with its venom. There is a, a great antidote to poison, and that's also featured in the Harry Potter books. And that, of course, is a bazaar stone. Oh, and I've yes. actually got a real bazaar stone. 
this oh, little that's, beauty wow, look at this. has passed through the guts of a llama, no less. So in, the, in Harry Potter, it's typically through a goat, but I didn't know they were real. Does this work? The King of France's cook was sentenced to death, and they said to him, instead of being executed, we'll make you swallow some poison, and then we'll give you a bizarre stone to see whether that works. Guess what happened to him? I he totally survived. Game. He died. It's based on an actual belief, but not based on actual I'm, results. Would you want to swallow a llama stone? I'm just remembering now that this was, in fact, inside of a llama. So I might just spell it out. Lesson two, how to spot. Isn't that fun? I love that. This website has so much fun, informative information that can engage our, our families and our kids. There also is a really great app that can be accessed. I wanted to show you this and give you an idea of how this also looks. Really great. It's called Arts and Culture. All right, I'm going to put this up here. As you can see, it looks like a little, it's right there. And when you download this, so it's Google Arts and Culture, and when you download it, what you typically want to do is, took me a minute to find on here, so I'm going to show you. It has a button at the bottom right here where you want to take a picture. So you're going to click that. I'm going to go back. So it's not on the main page. I mean, you can scroll different articles and things like that, but it's this button right there is where you wanna actually use this format that I'm gonna show you really quick. So you have something called art transfer on here and art selfie, art project. You could literally Download a picture that's in a museum, say it's like a Van Gogh painting, Starry Night, and you hit a button on that app and it will project on your phone as if it's in your living room, on your wall, or whatever room you're in, which is really neat. So I'm going to share my screen. This is a fun little thing. It's called... I love it. Does this artwork look like me? So I took a picture of myself the other day, and this is what it pulled up. So apparently it, it, it thought that I looked like this person that I'm not going to try to say the name because I, I don't speak that language. Anyway, it's kind of cute. And this is my favorite one that it pulled up. I'm looking good. I, wow, who knew? But look at the resemblance there, 49%. So let me stop that share. That, so that's something that's fun. You can maybe use your phone or your kid's phone. You can download this app and they can access and, and kind of culturally play around with them and try to project things or see who they look like. We actually did it to my husband and all of us. I, I have four boys and we took pictures of each one of them. And I don't think we have ever laughed so hard at what everybody's photos resembled. It, it was quite a comedy session in our family that night. Okay, let's go to the next clip here. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Tend to talk a little quick. All right, this next one is great for science lovers. It's basically an interactive where you can Skype a scientist which is pretty brilliant. That is a free service. Typically, it's only for groups um, that you can get together. But during this whole, you know, pandemic, they're letting it um, happen with just within your family. You just have to request. And I think it's really great because you may have someone who's an animal lover in your family, and there might be a scientist that works at the zoo that you actually will Skype them, and you can come up with some really great, great questions together as a family and ask the scientist about their job. What do they do? What are their ins and outs every day? How did they get to be that type of a scientist? What kind of schooling did it take? I mean, there. There are so many different ways that you can spin this. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. As you can see, this is Skype a scientist. You'll fill out this form here. Enter your information. 
kind of tell what state you live in. I want to come down to here because look at the different types of scientists that they can assign to you. Animal scientists, geologists, marine biologists, so many different avenues to take this. Museum professional, I mean, maybe you can tour a museum and then talk, if your kids are interested, then you can actually sign up to talk to a museum professional. I just thought this was amazing to have this one-on-one -on -one live interaction here. And you can basically say what age group and just some information about your family and, and the needs of your family. Okay, that's a really great one. The next little site I wanna take you to is the National Museum um, of the Air Force. Who knew that you could virtually go to this museum and see all the planes that you wanna be interested in? And I'm gonna go here. Okay, this brings us to the main page, the National Museum of United States Air Force. And as you can see, there are lots of different things. You could do a self-guided tour. Um, they have a podcast that kind of explains what you're doing, museum videos that you can actually watch, projects and programs, so many great things on here. What I wanted to go to was to actually go into one of these tours, like look at this. You can go right in here, you can do early years. Look at these, these planes, aircraft, tour around this entire museum. And as you can see, I'm not good at navigating through this. Follow the arrows, brings you back to here. Spin it around like so. Got a Holocaust section here that talks about, you know, the faces of the Holocaust and kind of, you know, what kind of aircraft and things were a part of that and part of that history. And look at this here. I'm going to scroll out. So back to this virtual tour main page, they've got this Cockpit 360. I already have a page open. So we could go right here and view different cockpits, which is really neat. We can look at like, here's one, here's a Cold War cockpit. This looks like it's a MIG. And you can scroll in, you can see, look at this, look how, intricate look at all these buttons that have to be pushed and and navigated and i mean this isn't just a steering wheel here that we're going to be flying this aircraft there is a lot to this so if you are into star wars or you have a child that is i mean my goodness look let's get in the seat of this aircraft and see have you know talk about what kind of imaginative story we can come up with as we're flying this. Uh, here is one, it's a World War II aircraft. Look how different it is compared to this. It says here it's called the, the Black Widow. Anyway, that's a really fun sight. The next thing I wanna talk about here is let's think of interests of our families. Um, we, my boys really, a few of them like to go on, um, oh my gosh, the, it just blanked me. I hate them, they're roller coasters. I, I cannot, I get dizzy anyway. I thought it would be really fun to look at what is out there in terms of a virtual roller coaster ride. I've talked to a lot of families who have kids who really need a lot of movement and maybe you can't, you can't access the park to swing right now, but maybe you can have a virtual, virtual roller coaster ride. You can put your kid in a laundry basket and you can shift the laundry basket with the movement of the roller coaster ride. You can 
put your arms up and out and you can be, you know, you can make it fun and you can watch it together live stream it to your TV or computer screen and make it a lot of fun. So let's take a look at what I found on YouTube here. And let's, let's go on a ride together for a moment. I don't know about you, but that made me dizzy and I wasn't even on the ride. It's crazy. So thank you so much for spending, you know, part of your afternoon today and watching this with me. And hopefully this gave you some ideas that you can integrate in your homes with your families. Thank you again and have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.